Hello and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to cover broadly what encryption is, and specifically I'm going to cover an example of an encryption scheme called the one-time pad. So first off, let's start off by explaining what encryption is with an example of where you'd want to actually use it. Let's say you have three people, Alice, Eve, and Bob. Alice wants to give Bob a message, but doesn't want Eve to be able to read it. One way that this could be achieved is for Alice to lock the message in a box and give the key to that lock only to Bob. That way, even if Eve intercepts the box, she can't actually read the message because she doesn't have the key. Encryption in this analogy is the process that we use to lock the box in a way to keep Eve out while still allowing Bob and Alice to easily access it. Encryption is used by most websites and apps to keep your data from being easily taken and read by malicious people. Now let's take a look at a real encryption protocol called the one-time pad. The basic idea behind the one-time pad is to not only have the locked box with the message inside of it, but instead to cut the message up into pieces and put each piece in its own box. That way, Eve now has to have all of the keys to access the message instead of just the one. The one-time pad takes us to the extreme by taking each individual letter of a message and encrypting it or putting it into a box as opposed to just taking smaller and smaller pieces of it. Now enough with the metaphor. Let's take a look at how it really works in practice. Let's say that Alice wants to send Bob the message, hello. Since the one-time pad works by doing some math that I'll explain in a moment, we will need numbers and not letters to encrypt the message. Luckily, we can use a system called ASCII, which assigns each character an equivalent number. So for example, the uppercase H is the number 72, and vice versa. Here is the number representation for hello using ASCII. On top of this, as some of you will know, computers represent numbers using a system called binary. This basically takes a number and represents it with ones and zeros. In the interest of time, I won't cover how to do these conversions in the video, so you'll have to take my word that the conversions that I've done are correct, as the ability to do these conversions isn't the focus of this particular video. So, here's where the real fun begins. The pad in the one-time pad refers to a bunch of randomly generated text that's the same length as the text that you want to encrypt. Typically, it's generated through a random number generation system, which then converts each number to ASCII until you have a pad that's the same length as our original text. In our case, since our text hello is five characters, we'll need five randomly generated characters. I've generated lowercase u, capital B, capital V, comma, and semicolon. This will be our pad for the examples. Now, here's where the math comes in. For each letter in our original text and in our pad, we can go through and do a procedure called XOR on the numbers. This will produce a third number, which can then be turned into a letter through ASCII. We can call the resulting text from this the ciphertext, and in our case, that's equals, single tick, colon, at sign, capital T. The important thing is that the XOR procedure can be reversed by using the pad and the ciphertext to give us back our original message. This means that we can send Bob the ciphertext and not care if Eve reads it, because only he can decrypt or unlock it with the pad. So. Let's say we're Bob, and we want to decrypt the ciphertext we've been given using the pad that we were given. First, convert each letter to a number again, and then we go one by one and convert each decimal number to a binary number in order to XOR it. Basically, XOR just means that when you line up two binary numbers and go column by column, wherever one number has a one and the other has a zero, put a one. Otherwise, put a zero. The resulting binary number will be the plain text. So here is the result of XORing the ciphertext and the pad. As you can see, it's the original plain text. So hopefully that all made sense and now you understand how the one-time pad works. Thanks for watching.